Hey 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 everybody, my name is Gleb Alexandrov and in this tutorial we'll be talking about how to create animated traffic effects. I'll be demonstrating this effect on the example of this sexy title. And basically we can achieve all kinds of different awesome looks just by using this simple technique, which by the way I used to create this traffic trails effect for the new video course. But initially this idea to animate the effect came from Todd McIntosh. I saw it in the comments on Creative Shrimp. Thank you so much, Todd. And obviously, another reason to explore these plasma looking effects is Video Copilot website by Andrew Kramer. And this guy created some effects for Star Wars recent movie. And apparently, this is mind blowing and a bit sad, I guess. And maybe it's envy. Can it be envy? Because while he's creating stuff for Star Wars, we just. Ah, let's not speak about that. I think I'll go and take some psychoanalysis courses, but let's draw some splines first. First I'm gonna open Blender, press Shift A, select Empty Image. That will create an image placeholder. Now we need to select the image. Press Open, navigate to folder with your images. And actually to have a reference for our spline work, I created this kind of a sexy title. The font that I used is called Nexa Rust. It's an amazing free font. That has a commercial version. So let's now create a Bezier curve. Now press Tab to enter the edit mode and you can grab the handles and move it around. And now I'm gonna disable normal and handle visibility. So we just see the curve itself. So let's move the points of the curve. And we need to switch uh, to the automatic mode by pressing V and select automatic. And actually let's enable the normals because I think that makes it more convenient. Let's set the normal size to 0 0.01. And now I'm pressing E to extrude the points. And what I'm trying to do is to copy the curvature of the text. It's a pretty quick process. I'm gonna fast forward through it. So we outlined that title with a spline. And that concludes the easiest step of our tutorial. And the next step would be to create the material. We're doing traffic trails effect, remember? So let's get to the node editor and start creating the traffic material. First I'm gonna switch to the rendered viewport mode. And also I'm gonna tweak the render settings to give us uh, the fluent viewport. Set the light bounces to zero. We don't need it. Disable the caustics and switch the viewport start resolution to 512. That will give us a smooth and responsive viewport. Now I'm gonna lower the environment light strength. Go to materials, select our background plane rename it to background. Now let's select the title and rename it to traffic. I like to keep things organized. Now let's switch to the node editor, delete the diffuse shader and create the emission shader instead. That will make our title glow and you can experiment with the strength. But I'll set it to 5. And let's pick an orange color because we'll be simulating the traffic. Now let's create the mix shader and the transparent shader. Let's plug it over here in the mix shader. Alright, now we need some kind of texture to mix between these two shaders. Press Shift A, select Texture, Musgrave Texture, and plug it into the mix factor. After that, I'm gonna create the color ramp noise, and immediately after that, I'm gonna invert it by pressing this button. And now I'm dragging these sliders around, and you can see how it affects the look of the title. And to be able to simulate the traffic, we need a mapping node and the texture coordinate node with the UV inputs. Uh, but what happens when we connect this stuff to the Mosgrave texture vector input? We see nothing! And that's because we need to enable UV mapping in the curve settings. Let's click on the Use UV button in the curve settings. And now when I'm tweaking the location value, you can see how transparency flows and the title changes. Now what I'm gonna do is reduce the scale of the noise a little bit. And now exciting stuff happens when you click and drag the Z value. And the transparency is shifting according to the outline of the text. And I think that looks pretty awesome already. Let's move on to the next step. To do to doom, animate the traffic. That's the core of the tutorial. Okay, let's right click on the location and select insert keyframes. Now let's drag the keyframe slider to the frame 120. Set the X location value to something like 5. It will work well. And insert another keyframe. Now if you press Alt A or just hit play, you will see the animation. And I think we should crank up the scale uh, to make it look less fractured. 
Okay, that looks good to me. And I'm gonna preview it by rendering a small chunk of the animation. Do -do -do -do, sexy title indeed. Oh, Andrew Kramer would be proud of me. Okay, so we nailed the basic look of the animation. Let's randomize it a bit. Click on the curve, hit tab to enter the edit mode, and then select the individual letters and hit P, click separate. And very convenient way to select things is press C to invoke the brush selection. So select the letter, press P to separate, select the letter, press P to separate, and don't repeat yourself. Hmm. Now let's step back to the node editor, add the mix RGB node, and let's add the input object info node. Plug the random input over here and switch to the add mode. What I'm doing here is I'm adding the random offset to the UV coordinates of each individual letter. I don't like the thickness of the letter. Let's make them a little bit thinner by tweaking the depth of the curve. And that looks far better. Now I'm gonna duplicate all the letters. Select everything, press Shift D to duplicate and slide them over. Now the random offset should be applied to the copy of the text too. Now I feel that I'm getting very close to the look I want to achieve. Let's enjoy the quick preview of the effect. Mm -hmm. And the rest will be just makeup, just beautifying attempts. Let's spray the paint. Let's add some color. Select all the nodes that we created for the procedural noise. Copy it by pressing Shift D and plug it into the color input of the emission shader. I'm going to create a bunch of nodes by holding Ctrl and clicking on the color ramp. And don't stop yourself. Create whatever colors that you like. I'm going to create some reddish stuff to mimic the backlights of the cars. And that should look awesome when we preview it. And one thing that still bothers me, let's set the keyframe interpolation to linear. Because now animation starts very slowly. Let's switch to the graph editor, select the keyframes, press T, and then select the linear interpolation. So the animation no longer speeds up gradually, and that's good. Now let's select the second mapping node, switch to the graph editor, press T one more time, and select linear once again. And for some reason we have to repeat the steps over and over again. And that's crazy. But on the other hand, that should be good for learning, isn't it? Maybe it is. Now let's set up the camera. No doubt I do this step only because Andrew Kramer does it all the time. And I'm trying to copy all his steps. So let's rotate the camera a bit to give a hint of a 3D perspective to the viewer. Now I'm gonna crank up uh, the depth of field. Nothing special, bring up the size and set up distance. No need to go over the top with the depth of field, just the slightest touch of it will do. Now, after we created the animation itself, let's preview it in the most efficient way possible. I'm gonna render just one frame to see how much it takes. And actually, I'll switch uh, the samples to 30. In the Output tab, let's select the AVJPEG format to preview our animation. Now for the boring stuff, select the folder, type something reasonable, hit Accept. Let's set the resolution to 30%. We just need to preview animation and we need to do it quickly. And click Render Animation. That will take 5 minutes or something like that. After that, hit Render and play Rendered Animation. And if you're completely satisfied with it, if not, then just tweak something, and if you're satisfied, let's post-process it and render it. And the sequence goes like that, post-process it first, and then render it. Now I'm gonna set the resolution to 100%, render one frame, and go to the node editor. Okay, let's switch to the compositor, and click on the use node button. Now I'm gonna select filter, glare, that will add the glare effect, let's set it to streaks, and the quality to high. I'm gonna bring the threshold down a touch, or maybe set it to 0.5 to not overdo it, and the angle to 45. After that, let's add another layer of glare and set it to fog glow. Play with the threshold to make only the brightest sparse glow. That's about going back and forth and tweaking values and seeing what works best for you. Let's add another layer of glow to push it to the limit, and I think we're done. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and now you can start creating your own Las Vegas style titles or you can experiment with the StarCraft Blue Energy style titles. And of course that applies to the traffic trails effect itself. Alright, that was Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com. 
uh, or wait um, by going to creativestream.com, you can check realistic lighting in Blender video course. It says, watch this video course and start creating juicy lighting. And you can see handsome photos of Eddie Burroughs and Colin Levy, other guys here. Feel free to share and subscribe and thank you so much for watching. We will see you the next time.